Hey everybody, welcome back. And this is going to be a quick side note on declaring functions. And this is inside the skeletons uh, section for module two. So there's going to be a little bit more reading of actual text here, but since there's not very much text in this, that's going to be okay. So declaring a function means we can call that function anywhere within the scope of our declaration. This means that we can call it above where it is declared if desired. Below is an example of a declared function and a successful call to it. So we're going to highlight this. We're going to bring it over to our REPLit instance. Here's the call to the function declared on line one. And here is uh, a, the definition of the function on line three. Function declared takes in a param, and it's going to console.log that parameter. So if we run this, we're going to see that it console.logs hello world. It also is going to say this undefined portion. Um, Keep in mind, that's not really super important for us. Essentially, what that's going to do is tell us the last value returned from something called in this scope or this context. And since nothing is returned here, it's just going to say undefined. In general, though, you don't want to worry too much about this. It's not really important for our purposes. And you want to keep in mind that anything in a console.log statement is going to come out looking like this. So there's the function definition. And above it is where we've called it. This has to do with the idea of hoisting. Essentially, when you come into this section, uh, when, when, the, the, when what is running the code comes into this section, everything with a function declaration like this gets hoisted to the top. It gets loaded into memory, both the name of the function and what it does. So we can call the function anywhere inside of the same scope, provided that it's declared in this fashion. So the opposite of this is that we can assign a function to a variable, either named or anonymous, and it's not going to work unless we call it after um, after where that function has been assigned. So we're going to copy this code and paste it on over here. Get rid of this. So I'm going to call one of these at a time. I'm going to call it assigned. And on line four, I'm creating a variable called assigned. And then I'm assigning it to an anonymous function that does the same thing that our previous function did. Just going to take in a parameter and log it to the console. So let's also comment out this function because we don't really care about it right now. And we're going to run it. It says assigned is not a function at line one one. So essentially right here, it's like, hey, I do have a variable called assigned. And that's actually the second part of hoisting. So when it gets to a section of code, the first thing it's going to do is find anything that's declared as a function. And to remind us, this is a declared function. It's going to find those and it's going to hoist them to the top so that they are available. Now, uh, the next thing it's going to do is find any variables and hoist them to the top. However, it doesn't define them yet. It just loads into memory the idea that there is going to be a variable called assigned, but we don't really know anything about it yet. So when we try to call it as a function, it's like, hey, that function's not a, it's not a function. The way we would get around this is we need to wait until after line six. Well, essentially line four, but we've moved it to line six because it's, you know, on multiple lines. But we essentially just need to make sure that this assignment has happened before we call it. Before this up here, we don't have any uh, inkling that assigned is a function. However, afterwards, it's been assigned to a function that does uh, takes in a parameter and logs to the console. So line seven, we now know we have a function called assigned and we know what it does. So when we run this, it's going to work. So let's go ahead and move this back up here. We're going to comment it out. We're going to comment this one. Now, what we're about to demonstrate is rather superfluous, but just want to make sure that everyone's aware that this works whether we have a named function like this, or an anonymous function like this. There's not a ton of difference between those. Um, however, there is some difference. And there's ostensibly a debugging reason why it would be useful to always name your functions. Um, but that is one of those where I have literally heard it both ways emphatically from people whose development experience I would, uh, would what would you call it, respect. So. We'll get used to that because eventually you're going to have that happen more and more where somebody's like, no, you can never use this. And the other person's like, no, you always have to use this. Essentially, what you want to do as an aspiring developer is understand the reasoning behind both arguments so that in the event that you need to choose one or the other, you can at least uh, make an informed decision as opposed to just, well, the guy that I like or the lady who I enjoy talking with said to do it this way, so I'm going to do it that way. Much better as a beginning developer to understand why each person is coming at it the way that they are. So that if you get on a new project, you do whatever you want. But if you end up on a legacy project featuring either one of the previous uh, methods, you have an idea of why it's instantiated that way and what to do next. So real quick to finish up this demonstration, we're going to run this. It's not going to work. It's going to say assign name is not a function. 
and it's because we do know that assign name is part of this, but we don't know it's a function yet. If we move that below where the assignment happens and we run it now, it's going to work. Won't work either. That's a really bad message. I should change that to uh, works now. There we go. Okay, well with that in mind, I might change that, I might leave it. Um, although to be honest, leaving it seems like a bad idea, so I'll probably change it. But anyway, that's gonna be pretty much it for this minor lesson in declaring functions. Now that you're writing skeletons with a bunch of different functions everywhere, the way you wanna picture it is that for the time being, and back to reading, if you declare your functions rather than assigning them to variables, meaning doing them this way rather than this, you're pretty much going to eliminate one thing that you need to worry about during the interview. If you get a function where you've written it perfectly and it says it's not defined, it might be because you did something like this and forgot to call it below where you, um, where you made the assignment to a function. So that's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching. In the next lesson, we're going to do something called render phone number. It's an optional lesson. It's kind of a bit of a sidetrack, but it's good to introduce yourself to some of these things. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.